As the Knicks come back home and get the win, let us get right across the street and say hello to Deuce McBride. Uh, Deuce, thank you so much for joining us from our Lexus Gameside studio. It's your first career playoff start. When you start this year now, 15 starts, you're averaging almost 18 a game. You go for 17. Why are you so effective when you start? Oh, man, first off, uh, glory to God. But, you know, I think it's just, uh, you know, the impact I, I try to make on both ends of the floor. Uh, I come out there with a with a mentality that, you know, defense first and then whatever comes on offense, you know, I'm a, I'm a great scorer, but defense first. Hey, Deuce, whenever we talk, that means something good happened right <laughs> after a game. So it's good to talk to you after this game, especially can you just describe for yourself the matchup that you had with Tyrese Halliburton tonight after the games that he had in, in Indiana? Somebody had to try to stop him. It was your job tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, a talented player. Um, he was really uh, had it going in uh, Indiana, which I think led to a, a lot of uh, us helping in and then them getting kick out three. So I just wanted to make sure that he was uh, limited in this game. And also for you, if we're being honest, after you had a really good series against the Sixers, the first four games of the series, you were not shooting the basketball well. On that side of the ball, you were struggling. What got you going tonight? Uh, like I said, I think I just had to come in with more of a defensive mentality. I know I'm going to trust my shot. I'm, I put in the work. So as long as I'm uh, guarding, that's all that matters. Deuce, thanks so much. Deuce, on the loose again. Best yeah. of luck to you guys closing it out. Hope we talk to you soon. <laughs> Indianapolis on Friday night. For sure. Thank you. All right. So Precious Achua doesn't start. Tom Thibodeau goes small. And McBride in starting on I don't mean to cut you off, but what you just said, let's just start there. And while the players and the effort and everything they did, but let's begin with Tom Thibodeau and the game that he had. Because the decision to begin with the lineup that he went with, the reasons why he went with it, which were on display in this game, it certainly helped Jalen Brunson. It got, he just said it, Deuce told us, it got him going offensively because he had a defensive assignment. Dante DiVincenzo said the same thing in game three, focusing his defense in game two, focusing his defense on Halliburton got him going offensively. And so for Tom Thibodeau, brilliant decision to make that change with the starting lineup. And I also want to say that what Tom Thibodeau did with his rotations tonight was magnificent because he was bringing in players, he was getting rest when he needed to, and what helped is that everybody he put in the game did something. And Alec Burks, once again, was a revelation off the bench. So what Tom Thibodeau did in trusting what he has off his bench and then maneuvering the pieces throughout the first half of that game, it really set the Knicks up for what was a big playoff win. And the key to me was the start. You got the home crowd, the offensive boards. The Knicks outboarded the Pacers for the game on the offensive glass 20-5. to In the first half, it was... 12 to 2 and McBride with that start had nine points in the first quarter his energy and Halliburton by the way only took nine shots yeah, he was almost invisible especially in the first half I mean Tyrese Halliburton really was not impactful at all and Deuce McBride got the start and he and Brunson in a backcourt we talked about in the pregame they have had success together it does work because he's a catch and shoot guy and he can just focus on being an offensive player and he was in attack mode and really everybody in a blue uniform tonight was in attack mode and there was something about the building you are hearing in these highlights the roar of the crowd on these made buckets and I'm telling you I was in the building for almost the entire game I, I didn't want to leave Bill I came over here with about six minutes to go there was a different sound it was a roar and the players really did feed off of it and somebody like Deuce McBride a hustle kind of player an effort kind of player and also a young player seemed to really feed off of it I said that it was a rowdy crowd. They were ready to burst. They were ready for this game. And before the game, we talked about it. And I said, can a building help win you a game? Can it happen? And the Garden certainly did that for the Knicks. It did seem to breathe a lot of life and energy into this team. And it started, like I said, with that starting five and Deuce McBride. I think as you take a look at what's happening outside, and uh, look, Nick fans love to watch their team play at home. They hope not to have to watch Game yeah, seven. Don't want a game seven. Right. Game <laughs> six again is Friday. And to me, the start, you got the crowd jacked up. And when you start the way they did and the way Jalen Brunson started, that just feeds on itself and adds to even more juice in the building. Yeah, it, it certainly did. And it wasn't a perfect start. You know, again, you give the Pacers credit for being ready for what was coming. And they were making every three that they put up. And that's what's important, but was bigger was that everybody was asking me the last couple of days on my radio show and everywhere else, is Jalen Brunson okay? Is he going to be all right? Can he find the magic again? He absolutely did. There was no question about it. The footwork was there. He wasn't hesitating at all with what he was doing. 
finding his spots. They were also getting him free with screens. But even when he wasn't, he was moving so quick and so sure that he had them backpedaling and he was able to get into the physicality that he normally gets into. 26 points in the paint for Jalen Brunson. 26. That's his game. That's vintage Jalen Brunson. That's what he brought, and the Knicks desperately needed it. His fifth 40-point game. It probably could have been 50 by the way he was playing, and that was a spectacular finish for the N1 in the fourth quarter. All right, so most points in a playoff game in Knicks history. Brunson did it already in this playoff season against Philadelphia. He goes for 44 tonight, and again, it's his fifth game in these playoffs with at least 40 points. As Wally Zerbiak now joins us, help call the game on the ESPN Radio Network. Wally, Woo. you're in the building, now you're over here. Great hustle. How about the second chance points? 62 to 36 for the Knicks. And we often talk about their metric in terms of energy on the offensive boards. Worth repeating, the Knicks 20 offensive boards, the Pacers only five. What do you think? Just Isaiah Hartenstein dominated the paint. He absolutely brought it from the first possession. I said it on the radio. The Pacers got off to a 16-9 start. They subbed in three bench guys. I was very surprised by that move by Coach Rick Carlisle because they were controlling the game. They were controlling the paint a little bit. They were keeping the Knicks down. They couldn't figure out how to crack that defense because there was a lot of size on the floor. When they brought in those bench guys, the Knicks started to dominate the effort plays. They started to, to impose their will with their physicality. And once they got the momentum, that building, we heard it. Oof. It took off. That building yep. was electric. That is why you get the second seed to get that home court advantage it makes such a big difference in these playoff moments the Pacers look like a completely shook team they look shell-shocked when that crowd got into the game and the Knicks what a performance I did not see this coming I did not see them flipping the switch like this Jalen Brunson looks completely healthy from the tip he was more aggressive. He was the attacking player. He was getting to his spots. He was running Neesmith into multiple screens. What an overall performance by the Knickerbockers. And it's funny you say that because that, that has been the trend of is subbing in with about six minutes. Yeah. Carlisle does, and he gets Siakam out of the game. He brings him in Connell right. and, and Toppin. And usually in this series, that has been good for the Pacers. When those guys came in, for the first time in this series, they were non-factors. Yep. And that was a big deal. And, you know, again, it's preparations as the series goes on. You make adjustments, you watch film, and you start to see trends. The Knicks were absolutely ready for what they were bringing. And, Wally, I also loved the stuff that's not in the box score. And that is guys like Dante DiVincenzo and others <laughs> letting the Pacers know yeah. physically that this game was going to be different. That whatever happened in Indiana, that's in Indiana. What's happening here, this environment, I mean, this it was seeing all the – the uh, former Knicks, Alumni Row. Oh, it was unbelievable. Alumni Row gets bigger and bigger each game. John Starks is in the ear of the other Indiana <laughs> Pacer players. He grabbed McConnell's shirt once when he was over by him. He's standing up talking to all these guys. He is so into this game. That's what fans bring, the element of just joy, desire, yeah. and fire. I mean, that crowd is Oof. fired up. And when they weren't in their seats to start the third quarter, big difference. that's when the Pacers made their Great run. Point. All of a sudden, when everyone got back in their seats, that's when the Knicks made and answered the Pacer run. What an environment, just electric. Well, at your point, the Knicks are up 15 at the half, and crowd late arriving or whatever for the second half. Miles Turner goes one, two, two. three, mm. for three threes. Nine straight points, and just like that, they're within seven. Yeah, I mean, that was... And then the Knicks go on a 17-0 run. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> in a huddle, I'll, I'll never forget it. When you have a lead, you expect the other team to make a run. There are NBA players on that other squad. When they make their run, now it's our turn to make ours. That's exactly what Tom Thibodeau said in that huddle. He said, they cracked us. Now let's go, boys. Let's get this crowd back into this ball game. Let's get every offensive rebound. Let's attack when we get stops. Let's not settle for bad shots and bad possessions. That first open look, take it. Deuce McBride, what a performance. Lockdown defense on Tyrese Halliburton. Just got into him, denied him the ball from the jump. And then Jalen Brunson sets the tone. When he gets going like this, forget it. The Knicks are a really tough team to beat. He absolutely lit up whatever defender was guarding him. I was so impressed with Isaiah Hartenstein, the way he flipped the script on Miles Turner and Josh Hart doing all those little things. It was just an impressive performance. There was no, The Knicks' will was not going to be stopped, and that might be the highlight play of 
the playoffs, that big-time dunk by Dante DiVincenzo. They were quicker to everything, yes, it felt like, exactly. in this game. And if it exactly. wasn't for the three-point shot, the Pacers were just crushing threes. This probably would have been a 40-point blowout. The Knicks were faster to everything, rebounds, loose balls, 50-50s, and the hustle plays were all on their side. Look at the rebounding That's numbers amazing. total, 53-29. We haven't mentioned it. Woo. Isaiah Hartenstein tied a Knicks playoff record yeah. with 12, 12 offensive rebounds. 12 of the Knicks' 20 offensive boards. We also got to point out, guys, that Alec Burks, now Wally, you're the former player, 18 points off the bench. Doesn't play at all, Impressive. right? And then plays 44 seconds. And then the last three games, he scored 14, 20, and now 18. How about Alec Burks coming through when they really need him to come through here? It's coaching. The coaches all kept him ready, and they talked to him. They said, get in the gym. Be ready. Your number might be called. You have to be ready. You're a veteran. He made five threes. No hesitation. You don't forget how to play basketball just because you're not in the rotation for a little bit. You continue to work, continue to stay ready, and that is a culture-type performance by Alec Burks.